So you go from California, you take the, your, your No Limit Records uh, your investment, you move to Baton Rouge. Now, No Limit Records is getting somewhere. Now you're recruiting, yeah. okay? Uh, um, watching the documentary of you, you ended up buying homes inside a country club. Yes. Okay. By the way, can we uh, let's talk about let's talk about the country club, Kaimar. Uh, let's cue that video up. So let's talk about you not only buying homes in Baton Rouge in a gated community, yeah. but you recruiting Snoop Dogg. So let's take a quick look at this clip about what he said about you. You ready now, Snoop Dogg? I'm like, ready for what? He's like, come on. When we ride through this gated community, he's like, pick out which one you want. I'm like, I want that one. Signed in your name. You and your wife going out to that dealership. Pick out whatever two y'all want. Which one you want, boo? I want that one, I want that one. In your name. It's the first time shit was in my name. Everything was in Shug's night name. So this nigga showing me off the rip. I paid that nigga, gave you some chips. Now I'm finna buy you a house in your name, get you and your wife from automobiles. You ain't gotta go back to California, nigga. Spend your time in school and get your degree. And that's what I did. Right. Okay, and like, you ready now, so, so. so So you're recruiting him from death row, away, away from Suge, yeah. right? And you, you, uh, you talk to Suge in prison. Yeah. You guys have a, you make him an offer to acquire yeah. uh, a, a talent from his record label to your record label. Talk to us about that process of you recruiting and then showing him and taking things out of Suge Knight's name from Snoop, because they kept Snoop Doggy Dog that name, right? Yes. Okay, so they, they retained the rights to his name, but you gave him a home. Yeah. You gave him cars. You gave him ownership. Yeah. Talk to us about that process. Well, for me, uh, Snoop Dogg is probably my, my best student ever. Uh, he's one of the greatest bosses. I mean, he's a multimillionaire. Uh, he believed in God. He worked hard. He just needed the information and he needed that love. And so I was able to give that to him because I believed in him. And I knew that his heart was right. Even till this day, when you look at Snoop Dogg, what he do. I mean, he done put so many kids on. He started his own football league. Uh, he a giver. We created our own brand, Snoop Cereal, Broders Foods. Uh, we the first African-American owned cereal company with a national distribution. Yeah. And when we're talking about nothing being impossible, I mean, I love that brother like a brother because he's so humble. And um, I knew it was the right thing to do because I believed in his talent. And so that's why I gave Suge the money for him and that's why I brought him down to be a part of our family and we've been, we've been friends ever since. Um, sometimes you just know, like if that person, is, what, what, what I do love about Snoop he never had a hand out, he had a hand up. And that's the difference. Can you break that down, can you unpack that? What did he so, do to say, I'm giving a hand up? I mean, he put the work in. When, when I go into the studio, anything I asked him to do, that guy was working, working. So I'm like, I was a fan of his. For me to be able to get the biggest artists in the world assigned to me, that let me know that I'm doing the right thing and I'm doing the right thing by God. It, it wasn't me. Like God put this together, this was meant for us to be together and still be able to do what we're doing. I mean, as today, I created a brand for his mom called Mama Snoop because when you look at Aunt Your Mom and Uncle Ben, I feel like these was mockeries of us. But for me to do that for him and his family because I know his heart. And I also know the type of business person. Like I told y'all, like, if God could trust you with a lil, then he could trust you with a lot. Think about it. So what Snoop did with a lil and the way he fed people with the lil he had, look at what he's doing that is overflowing now. How God is giving him with this abundance of, uh, of, of wealth. And he's still humble. That's why I told y'all, like, I, I look at people where they at, at the bottom. I know where they're going to be at, at the top. And you look at a guy like that, he deserve everything. I mean, Snoop on every commercial he get. He'll do anything for a bag. Yeah, and well, he do it the right way. Yeah. He do he's it the right way. He's in like, Bollywood. So think about it. You look at Shaq. We see Shaq on all these commercials. I love it. He could be doing anything. Sure. Think about it. So that's what I told people this, right? Product outweighs talent. Snoop realized that he could only do music for so long. That's what I realized. 
You are not going to remember me for music. For what I'm doing right now, you're going to remember me for being the kings of the breakfast food. That was me and Snoop going to be. Because we're putting product and we're building and we're growing and we're able to have black product on shelves. This Black History Month, we are making history. Come on. People might not see it. Come on. Come on. There you go. <laughs> and so the thing is, what we have to show our people why it is so important to buy our product. So once we get into Walmart, get into Target, Elberson, Kroger's, all these places, we just did one of the biggest deals ever with Post. Post already has Fruity Pebbles, Honeycombs, all these different major brands now to have Snoop cereal with. Imagine what, we're gonna make the stock go up at that company because some brothers that come from the street that change their lives have some of the best product in the world. And we also growing, because we, we talked about WIC, right? right? Now we have healthy product for WIC. We got the regular cereal and we also have the healthy cereal. WIC approved. WIC approved. Nice. And it never been done. And, and then the thing about this, y'all, it ain't how you start, it's how you finish. So we're running a marathon, we're not running a race. And we're doing it with good people. And Snoop is a good one, of, he's one of the best that I know. Like, I'm talking about for his heart. So in that country club where you're recruiting Snoop at, yeah. get this house, get this, you're, you're, buying, up, you're buying up the, the yeah. country club. A lot of people didn't like that. Nah, nobody liked so, that. So coming out the gate, you had cops. Well, I'm the first black man with a house in a country club. First two. Yeah, so think about this. Then Snoop was the second one, because I brought him a house, then I brought my brother a house, brought my mama a house, then I brought Mystical a Let's house. Take over. So now we got five houses <laughs> where they never had black people in that community. And so they had to get to know us. What they thought was, oh, Master P in the rap, they're gonna tell the community up. I'm saying, no, I brought the governor house. <laughs> I got money. Like, I'm not coming here to do this. I'm coming to change and grow and help my people grow. We come in to educate our people and show y'all that we deserve a life like this behind the gated community. I also had the most money in the bank. So you I have the, the local bank. I was plan. the highest. Depositor. In the bank. So they told me, right, y'all, when I brought them houses, so this made national news. When I brought them houses, they told me that stop the loan. My guy went back, Johnny Cochran's called him, said he didn't do a loan, he paid for it. <laughs> so they told me then, okay, we're gonna stop him. He won't be able to play golf back here. I said, that's okay, I don't play golf right now. That was the only thing they limited me. I couldn't play golf with them. But I changed their mindset when they got to know me. So people could think whatever they want. They could think, oh, well, your brother did this, your sister did this, your auntie did this. And I told him, I went in there with Johnny Cochran when he was alive. Johnny Cochran said, P, nobody could judge you for who you are. I don't care what your family members are. My brother a crackhead. They're not going to judge me for my brother. When Johnny Cochran taught me that, I was able to hold my head up high, went in there and told them people, you don't know me, but when you get to know me, you're going to understand that I'm about integrity and I'm a God-fearing man. Amen. Amen.